The next step is staining of the cells or particles. As for most procedures, there are direct and indirect staining protocols, as well as a protocol for staining intracellular proteins. I would like to start off with the direct staining protocol. As mentioned earlier, to ensure viability of the cells, it is recommended to keep the cells on ice during the preparation and staining of the procedure. A typical sample contains 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of 6 cells, which are usually resuspended in a volume of 100 microliter in a tube or a round bottom plate. Depending on the sample preparation procedure, the cells should be washed. This is usually done using a buffer like PBS that includes serum or BSA. Then you spin down the cells and remove the supernatant. The next step is a blocking step. As for many other protocols, this can be done by adding a buffer with 1 to 10% serum or BSA to the cell pellet. To improve the blocking, the blocking reagent can also be included in the dilution buffer of the primary antibody, which in most cases might be sufficient. Again, this step is followed by washing and centrifuging the cells. The third step is incubating the cell pellet with the primary antibody. The optimal concentration of the antibody will need to be determined by titration. The aim with this is to obtain the maximal contrast between the specific signal and the background staining. In this direct staining protocol, the primary antibody is fluorochrome conjugated. The most frequently used fluorochromes are the fluorescent-based by FITSI and phycoerythrin, or PE, but as you can see, there are many, many more available. In general, the sample is incubated for 15 to 45 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius, and in order to protect the fluorochrome from photobleaching in the dark. Again, this step is followed by washing and centrifuging the cells. The following step, the fixation, is an optional step, as there are many pros and cons for the fixation of cells. An advantage is the prevention of infection, for example, with contagious diseases from patients whose blood samples are investigated. Fixation can also be convenient, as fixed samples need not be analyzed immediately after staining, but can be stored for some time in the fridge, for example. A disadvantage of fixing your cells, though, is that you cannot exclude dead cells, as the fixation process kills virtually all cells. Fixation also alters the light scatter profiles and may increase the autofluorescence, so, so you might need to adjust the instrument settings. If you decide to go ahead and fix the cells, you can either use alcohols such as ethanol or methanol. These reagents can work for most protein antigens. Um, certainly, they are the fixation reagent of choice for DNA measurements. You could alternatively perform the fixation with formaldehyde or paraformaldehyde. Although this is a cross-linking fixative, it generally works well with most antigens. And finally, before running the sample on the flow cytometer, it needs to be resuspended in a minimum of 250 microliter of buffer, depending on the type of assay you're performing or the machine you have available. To avoid fading of the fluorescence, keep the stained cells in the dark at 4 degrees Celsius and analyze as soon as possible. Also, remember to vortex the sample immediately before the run to ensure an evenly mixed single cell suspension. Now, this was the direct staining protocol for flow cytometry. Now, I would like to briefly talk you through the indirect staining protocol. This protocol starts off with the same steps as the direct protocol. So first, you would prepare your single cell suspension. And secondly, comes the blocking of the samples if required. The third step is again incubation with the primary antibody. In contrast to the direct staining protocol, the primary antibody in this case is not labeled with a fluorochrome. It may be conjugated to biotin, though, as illustrated um, in these pictures. Following a washing step, 
the pellet is then incubated with a secondary antibody. This is the antibody which is labeled with the fluorochrome such as FITSI or PE. If you have used a biotin conjugated primary, you would need to incubate with a fluorochrome conjugated avidin or strapped avidin. The following steps are as before. After washing is an optional fixation step before running the sample on the flow cytometer.